What's going on, Alex Pandre here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. In this week's video, we're gonna go over the anticipated packs. These are cardistry chainers, or uh, should I call them hard knocks. Um, so I don't know how this started, but somebody mentioned, hey, hard knocks, that makes sense. And so it stuck, I made it as a joke on Instagram, and then we actually did a vote. So these are now officially or unofficially called hard knocks. Get it? Hard knocks. But the original name for these were packs. Uh, so if you can figure out what that stands for, leave a comment below on what you think PAX stands for. So before we get into the tutorial, the cardistry chainers are available in five colors now. Uh, so we have red, green, yellow, purple, and blue. And you get five of these uh, within one set. So when you buy the red ones, you'll get five of them. When you buy the yellow ones, you'll get five yellow ones, etc. We do have a limited amount of them, so they will go out pretty quickly. Link is down below if you want to check them out. Now you're probably asking yourself, what are cardistry trainers, or rather trainers in, in this case? Because I don't really feel that these are used just for cardistry. Artistry. I've been doing a lot more magic or magic training with them, but basically what they are they're sort of a plastic um, I guess playing card, but just thicker so five of these would make up the size of a deck of cards um, and what you use these for is to train your fingers in doing either harder slights or if you want to practice cardistry without dropping cards or get them in clumps uh, so that could be easier for some of the cuts. But basically I've been using them to better my sleight of hand. I've been using them to practice cardistry so this definitely helps me out. But in any case we're gonna go over the features of these and teach you things that I do with them. Now again I'm not a cardist by any means but I do love to play around with these and I've had these in my hands nonstop for the last few weeks and I have sort of my own little routine that I do with them so we're gonna take you through five of my favorite things to do with these and learn them step by step all right so what can we do with these packs well first and foremost uh, the video that you saw in the beginning was all the stuff that I do with it. So we're gonna go through them step by step. We're gonna use one color for each of the five things that I'm gonna show you. And then you can sort of learn and go ahead and come up with your own stuff. So the first thing is a very standard cut that I like to do with these. Um, and it looks like this. Now, keep in mind, everything that we're gonna learn here, you can combine with other things and put them together. So this is mostly at the end of a sequence that I do. I do this. Uh, or rather just that sort of cut. Now this is based off of the hot shot cut. So if you know the hot shot cut, you'll notice that the ending is the same where the packet is grabbed in this position and brought across. Now what's gonna happen here is you're gonna start to do kick cuts or swing cuts or whatever you wanna call them uh, with the right finger. You're gonna pick them up like this and place them into the left hand. Now you can do this as many times as you want, right? There's five of these, so you can do them all there, or you can do a few, and then when it's time that you wanna end it, you're going to rotate uh, your hand clockwise so that it spins this way, and you're gonna grab with the first finger and the thumb, you're gonna grab that part of the top packet. Now the bottom packet is rested on the, th the pinky here, and you're just going to separate all of them like this, and you're gonna pull this towards yourself, rotate it around and it's gonna go to the bottom and your finger is gonna just come out here. You can do this without doing the kick cut. So you can pick this up, spin it already so you could get it in that position and go from there. Or you can go after you do a few of them, you can go and end it that way, okay? And it's just a nice way to end a series of cuts, okay? So just like that. Another thing you can add to this is after you do this, or rather before you get to here, if you have more than one packet here, you can split this up, do this with one, come around and then do it with the other. Um, so it looks sort of like this. You could even add a spin in it. So here, here, or sometimes what I like to do with this one is just give it that spin. So now it looks like a full sequence spin and rotate back okay all right the second thing that i like to do with this is not that I make a triangle sort of formation and then come around uh, so you notice that the first thing is always going to be sort of by ending to things um so in this case i 
did the triangle and then I came around and then I ended with what we learned the first time. Now for the triangle thing, uh, I like it. I don't know if this is actually a thing. Um, I just sort of came up with it and I, I just like it doing it with these because I can never do these kind of displays with playing cards because they would fall all over the place. Um, so the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to get into sort of a Z position, all right? So if you guys know uh, cardistry a lot, might start like this, all right? Sybil and, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna pick up maybe two, and then I'm gonna pick up one to get this position. And now I'm gonna grab the middle one with my right ring finger and pinky. So I'm pinching that one just like that, all right? So it's gonna come here. I'm going to Z, pinch, and now I'm gonna slide the top packet, I'm sliding it back towards me so that this part of the middle packet, instead of now being on the bottom, is now on top. And as you do that, you're gonna get into this sort of triangle formation, which is a nice display and could be used in between your sequences. So, boom, and boom. Okay, so once again, pick up, pick up, Z, grab, move down, and I like to slide it down. And if you could do this all in one motion, I think it'd look good, like that. Okay, cool. All right, for the next one, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about this one hand cut. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's just a, called a scissor cut. Now there's a lot of one hand cuts that you can do. Some of the ones that I also do are the Charlier cut, um, Revolution cut, um, you can also do Judo Flip by Franco Pascali. There's a lot that you can do with this, but for now, I'm just gonna talk about this one. Okay, and you can learn the other ones on your own. Uh, but this one, the scissor cut, is going to be like this. You're gonna start with the cards in this position in a high uh, dealer's grip, so not, not right there, but you're gonna pick it up. And now your thumb is gonna do the work. So the thumb is going to go to the back corner and it's gonna start to split, all right? Now, here's the positioning. Your thumb is holding on to the bottom left hand corner of let's say two or three or one or however many you split. Your left thumb is on the back right here keeping this from falling. So now the bottom packet is between the first finger and the pinky, okay? And that's not going anywhere. And now the top packet is between the first finger and the thumb. So as you can see, it creates sort of a scissoring action. Now from here, you're gonna split, come all the way around, and now you're gonna split so that it clears and go back, okay? Now the split happens um, from here. You can go straight into it, or you can separate a little bit out first of how many you want, go into that corner, and then scissor it, all right? That sounds weird, scissor it. Um, but that's what it is, and I like it because once again, at the end of something, um, you can go into doing this and then doing that. Let's say at the end when you, instead of placing it here, you can put your thumb right there and just kind of catch it and do that as a last sort of ending move. Um, another little tip that you can do with this is to do it continuously. And I don't know if this is something that has been taught before, but basically you would scissor, and now as you come around, your thumb continues to pass and grab now whatever that bottom packet was, which is now on top, you're gonna take it back, and then you're gonna go back with it, and then again, and so on and so forth. So it's here, here, don't square up all the way, your thumb goes and it starts to grab the other packet, and then you can continue with it, okay? And when done in speed, it should look like this. Again, I'm not the, mo the foremost expert on any of these cuts, but I do enjoy doing them, so, and this is a good workout too, continuously doing that. Oh, look at that, I got it. I sort of stripped it from the middle, maybe that's something you can do, I don't know. Good.
All right, moving on. Um, this one I like a lot because this is something that I don't usually do with a deck of cards because sometimes they just go all over the place. And it's gonna be this, where I do this and then the one trainer jumps up in the air makes a few rotations and then you catch it back in the middle. This is nice to do because I like, always like the noise. The noise is something very comforting with these trainers. So doing things that emphasize the noise uh, is a big plus for me. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm weird. Uh, but in any case, this is how it's going to start. So this one cut is a sort of a false cut. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is I learned it from a Leonard Green DVD from Green Magic Volume 1 or 2 or one of those. Um, and he does all of these weird kind of three packet cuts and I think this was one of them where again you're gonna start in the Z position and what's gonna happen is you're going to come up first finger is here and then the, on the middle one the, the, fir the thumb is on the back so the middle one is going to rotate that's the middle one is gonna do the whole work here it's gonna rotate out and you're gonna rotate it out until it is clipped with the first finger and middle finger just like that, okay? And uh, you're still holding on to it with the th top thumb. So you're doing this, you're clipping, and now you're going to come around. So you're gonna go back towards yourself. You're gonna grab it with now the ring finger of the right hand and place it back. So it comes around, it does this little swirly action you're gonna grab it with the thumb and ring finger of the right hand and then reconnect all right so that's how it should look so you do that once boom and now you're gonna do this and instead of coming down all the way your thumb goes inside of it and you're just literally going to do the exact same motion but you're gonna let it go come away with the hands like this and then catch, all right? So I obviously can't do this in slow motion, but it should look like that. Around, around, stop it with the thumb, and then just go into it, all right? So that is something cool to do, and then look, at the end we can finish with that, or a scissor cut, um, or you can start off with a triangle formation, go into this, and then go into that, it's up to you. All right, the last one that I want to go over um, looks something like this. And this is based off of the Madonna cut. So uh, back in a uh, long time ago, actually, Dan and Dave revolutionized a lot of cuts. And one of them, the, one of the easiest ones that I can do uh, was versions of um, this, this flourish called Madonna. And so I like to do just that with with these because of, like I said the noise and also uh, it does look interesting so the way that we're gonna do this is by cutting off at least three of the trainers and now you're going to split into this position so that the middle finger is holding uh, the ring finger is holding the bottom ones the middle finger is holding the middle one and then the, the first finger is holding the top okay now what's going to happen is you're going to sort of kick the middle one out a little bit so that the thumb can grab it, all right? And the thumb is gonna pivot it back towards yourself. And once this happens, you're gonna see that it's on the thumb and it's on the thumb. So only the two thumbs are working here. The right hand is going forward, the left hand is going back, you're doing this. At this point, you're gonna split the top packet in two. And you're gonna come back around. Now this is gonna go back up to the top. You're gonna leave the bottom packet on the left hand, come back around, and now go back to the starting position, but now you're going to leave the middle packet on the bottom packet. Come back with your right hand, come forward. Now that middle one is going back up to the top, leaving that one, and now rotating that last one on top. Now I know this could be confusing, so I'm gonna to try to do it again very slow, break off at least three, get it into this position, thumb towards yourself, open up, come back, leave the bottom packet, come back again, now you're going to leave that middle one as you come forward, leave the middle one, come around, come back again, rotate this on top, 
leave this and then come back again with nothing and just leave that one on top, okay? So it looks like this and like that. Boom, 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 boom. Just as a note, one thing to keep in mind is that when you get to the last part here where I'm doing the last one, um, I, I flip these two fingers, I switch them. I don't know if that's for any particular reason or if I just do that subconsciously, but I just noticed that. So when I get one, two, I leave the bottom one, I come here, I go from the first finger holding this to the middle finger holding it. Um, like I said, don't know if that's for a particular reason, but I just figured I should mention that. All right guys, there you have it. That was the video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked it. If you did like it, hit that like button. Now before you go, one thing that I do want to mention about these cardistry trainers or whatever you want to call them. Um, and it goes to the same sort of concept of when practicing sleight of hand. Now I'm a big advocate of learning things and, and doing things harder than you would usually do. So that's why a lot of the move monkey stuff I do is hard and maybe impractical sometimes. Um, but I learn these things and I tend to try to learn them and practice them because when you go back to the basics you're gonna look much smoother it's gonna be easier for you it's the same concept if you watch baseball at all I don't but uh, they put a big solid donut uh, steel donut on their bat and they take a few swings with it before they go up to bat and what that does is that it when you take it off it makes it much easier same sort of concept here so and it goes into magic as well if you want to uh, work on your pass or work on even your top change or your diagonal palm shift try doing them with these and then pick up a deck uh, you know half an hour later and see how easy it is so go ahead hit that like button if you did like this video subscribe if you haven't already we are on the road to 100,000 which is super exciting uh, to have 100,000 people join me on this journey uh, it's incredible so we're gonna do something big at 100,000 so road to 100,000 subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you in the next video peace